We are officially live. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Lock In Live Show episode four, first one of 2021. And I'm so super, super excited to share our guest with you today. He is someone who has sold over 10 million records, albums all over the world, had top 10 singles, with singles, I don't even know if he needs an introduction from me. Apache, hello. You've also- How are you doing? I'm great to be with you. <laughs> great to be with you. Happy New Year to you. Great you- to be with everyone as well. Beautiful. And, you know, Apache, you last week... Okay, guys, just got to finish this little intro. So Apache actually got recognised and was on the Queen's Honours list last week. He was recognised um, and received a British Empire Medal Award for the music, his services in the music industry, for his academy, for, for the young youth. Apache, how do you feel about that? That's, like, amazing. Absolutely great, great honour. It's been a long journey, but to be recognised by the Queen, it's, it's great. It means so, so much. I mean, I didn't even know myself. It just a couple of weeks before Christmas, I was told. So, great surprise. Speechless, I mean, what can I say? Um, if it recognises all the work that I've done around the world and, you know, waving the British flag and, it created an industry that wasn't there when I started. So it also recognises the start of that industry, that you know, the Asian urban sound. That, so it's great that the Queen said that. So it means a lot. And, and seven that's, years that's ago. That's a legend. That's like breaking barriers. I mean, yeah. you've been in the game for so long. Like you were the first British Asian artist to break mainstream. Do you know, like when someone's winning, like we're all winning. Like that's amazing. That's, that's right. like inspiration. Um, I'm glad you said that because this award is for everybody. It's for the industry. Yeah. It's for all of us, everyone that's helped, everyone that's... So he recognises us all. And if he recognises the industry, all those young people out there, you know, we have a platform that wasn't taken seriously when I started until we had the success. And now you should, you should strive off that. You should continue to build on that platform and, uh, and, 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 and be proud. But yeah. definitely take your, take your art seriously because there's a place for it in the world. The Queen tells you so. <laughs> exactly and that's why I think you know I'm so excited to have you on and just like ask you loads and loads of questions I know you've been bombarded with like interviews last week and this week so you know here we go so no problem me and you we're, so been, we're friends we're fr- I'll be waiting to speak to you we're friends for a long time so exactly. it's gonna be good so I've been promoting you on my socials for the last couple of days so I literally said everyone send me in your questions so I've actually got questions from like other people that I'll probably yeah. want to night live with us so how did how old were you firstly when you got into the music industry and like how did it happen like how did it all begin oh wow I mean uh if I trace it right back I would say I used to listen to music at home my parents used to listen to music not musicians but just fans of all the classical stuff I grew up with Asher Bowles, Leo Lutha Magesh going to the house like many many others lots of uh Bollywood movies um uh, dad used to be a fan of um Nazareth Pati Ali Khan yeah. So a couple of drinks later, off you'd go in his right? <laughs> So music was all around. I mean, it comes from our culture, right? So, um, yeah. but, you know, growing, growing up in Handsworth, if anyone knows about Handsworth and Birmingham, great multicultural town, but, you know, a great um, a reggae, what a great, great reggae scene and in industry, right? From the UB40, for example, before me, white reggae group from Birmingham, one of the biggest reggae groups in the world. So diversity, celebrating diversity from day one. And then when I went, when I went on the street, I just fell in love with reggae music. It was just one of those things, you know. It, it wasn't rock and roll. It was it was reggae for me. I fell in love with it. And then going into the studio, it just seemed more obvious to kind of put all those elements. Well, those elements are getting together in your head. You know, the Hindi's there, the the reggae is there, the patwa's there, the language is the. Oh, so let's celebrate that in music. Oh, and, and, like, and about fourteen, it? about fourteen, just like anyone else. I mean, when yeah. do you really start listening to music? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and. Um, I just got more into it. I just got more into it. I loved it. I loved it. And were you just like literally going into the studio? Were you just like mixing all those sounds? No, I mean, not at 14. I mean, I was just getting closer to the thing I loved. I bought records. I started playing records. I started messing about with amplifiers and speakers. I got to about 18 and it was just a passion, a hobby. Um, I got to 18 and started getting involved with the reggae scene and the reggae sound systems. I built my own little reggae sound system, started playing parties as a DJ. Yeah. And it was, only, it was only until about 18 until I was about 18 years old, I thought, let me just go into the studio, maybe make one song for myself, just you know, play on my decks. Um, yeah. And literally it was about making one song and that song was Movie of India. So that's how it started, my own passion and drive, you know what I mean? 
did you always like know that you wanted to be in the music industry like and you wanted to be an artist no 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 actually actually always wanted to be a teacher okay I wanted, I wanted to i wanted to teach english i wanted to teach sport um I loved music, but um, you know anyone that knows me at school, they knew I was, you know, I was a head prefect at school. I was doing all the sports activities, Birch for Harriers, and a part of an athletics club, and I still got my trophies on the wall. Um, yeah. So it was all about teaching sport, and I'm, I'm, I'm still a basketball referee, and and so. You but are. I made this. Re I made. It, God had a different plan, obviously. Yeah. God had a different plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting to know like because god, people always say like when you're younger like oh my god like I've always wanted to be in music or an artist or, or so on um so we had it really interesting so I had a question for you and then someone else wrote in this question for you as well um so basically your background is Indian and I've, like obviously heard from several interviews uh you had a Jamaican nanny and that's why and how you learn how to speak patois and so on but how were your parents and stuff with that? Were they like supportive? Because when you go home and speak like in Patois to them, like I mean, if you think if you think <laughs> oh about it, God. yeah, I mean, there was a lot of Patois everywhere. Every, yeah. every Indian person was speaking Patois, and every Jamaican person had a few Indian lines back in the day, and that's how it was really. Um, yeah. But I mean, when I it wasn't just about learning the, the you know the Patois the language. I'm in a Jamaican household for like eight hours a day for five yeah. years. So you, you're understanding language, culture, um, food, fashion, whatever it may be. Yeah. Then later on when I got into music, because there was that understanding of the culture, the music worked. Otherwise, you can't just do music like that. You know, yeah. it's, it's a different culture. It's a different sound. Ju you know, reggae is very precious to Jamaica. And I've been to Jamaica yeah. many times. And so it was that early, you know, I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't forget about it, but I didn't pay much importance until about 15 years ago. So let me trace it right back. And let yeah. me trace it back further than that before I was born. When my mother and father dropped me off there, they obviously didn't have a problem with Jamaican people or black people. So yeah. that's a great thing because you always hear about the trouble and the tension and the racism. But yeah. right from there, they didn't have a problem to drop yeah. me, and my, my, me and my sister off right there. And, and that influenced my life. And later on, yes, I love music and the culture, but that acceptance and then the understanding and be able to speak the language. It's not just the Indian person saying, wow, my respect, man. You, you, it's a language that you speak. Then I put it, into my music and my first song was movie over india then chuck there then don raja and what i'm trying to say is i did it as an indian my yeah. name is apache indian so yeah. i came into the reggae scene in the music world as who i am sharing my life my prayers and it wasn't a formula for success what if it what if it wasn't popular it was still my thing right the fact that it became popular is just a huge bonus it makes it that much more special that you like what I like, my part of my life, my emotions, my dreams, my prayers, my views, like arranged marriage and all these things. So it became it became more important around the world than I ever thought. And it just became became from one record that I wanted to do for myself. You know, I mean, look at that, guys. Look at that. You know? Like, so like basically, so you sang so many on like on so many to be subjects and that no one spoke about, especially in the Asian society. Did you get backlash for it? I did. I did. It's a very good question because I did. Anyone that's going to take on subjects like caste system or rage marriage or AIDS, which is all on the first album yeah. and, um, and a song called Drink Problems, which is about alcohol abuse. Yeah. Um, nobody was doing that. In fact, that scene wasn't even there. Let's just get this right. There was Bhangra, hip hop and Bhangra. there was not an Asian urban scene at all, people. I have to tell you that. So first of all, the sound, the, the, the mixture of the sound, the reggae and the Indian and the part of, as I said, our culture right there. Uh, and secondly, those issues and, 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 and people would come to me and say, yeah, great. Wow. Or somebody would say, why did you do that? Why, why, why are you? Do and then somebody would obviously say the older generation would say, he's trying to be black. Gala, and, I look and there was lots of, you know, we had had the Hansworth riots in 1985 and lots of Asian and black tension or so they say. So here's a guy that's trying to be black. He wasn't trying to be black. He was just sharing all his life with you up to that point, you know, yeah. with this Indian, with this Jamaican, with this British. Hence, we got into the British charts. Because I want to be a part of the country I'm in as well. I want to, and, and we didn't grow up seeing brown faces on TV. You know, yeah. I did Top of the Pops and Jules Holland and Blue Peter and all this. But you know that, so it's, it, we're starting a scene now. I mean, wow. And I'm from in the deep end as well. So people, it wasn't easy. And I, 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 I heard racism. I heard things, you know, from TV, from the ground to my own culture, um, from black people maybe as well. The odd comment from look at And we, 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 we. We're breaking stereotypes. We're finding our own identity through all this. Our first British Asian, my parents came from Jalandhar. 
So I couldn't go home and say, dad, this is what happened at school. He's never been to school in this country. Yeah. So, it was, it was, so I'm learning from my dad, but he has to learn from me too. So I had a great relationship with my parents, going back to your question. I was yeah. never a bad person. I, you know, I love my parents. They supported me all the way, yeah. whether I wanted to be a teacher. In fact, I worked in a factory for six years. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you go through it all. My, my parents have lost them both now. God rest their soul. Uh, yeah. They would be proud of this British medal. But um, respect your parents and that's where your blessings come from. Trust me, people. You disrespect your parents and you want blessings. It doesn't happen. You know, you learn from them. You teach them as well about this new country and you move together with them. Um, and, and thank God, I mean, a lot of uncles and aunties were saying to my parents, look at him. Look at him. Oh, look at the and the Jatta and the dreadlocks. And, the, and then when I became famous, it was, oh, hold on. He's one of ours. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, in, the, he's in the chart. And so almost you have to break it, a different culture, a different scene for your own people to say, yeah, he's one of ours. But you know what? If you supported it from the beginning. So I'm saying to people now, support artists, support your people, support your culture. We don't have British Asian in the charts. We don't have them in Hollywood. We don't have them on the football pitch. Let's talk about all aspects of life. It's not just music. I've just shown you that I can be in the charts seven times, seven, you know, and eight Hollywood movies and now award from the Queen. As I say, isn't that for all of us to share and say, listen, that's inspiring. And let's continue to build on that. It's not music. It's our culture right here now in our hands to blow up. I think our, the Asian culture, in my opinion, is probably the most racist amongst each other. And there may be people that agree and there may be people that disagree with me. But I think there has been some form of, um, I, I, I don't know, like... I, I don't know what it is, but You're absolutely it, it, shouldn't right. there's, there's, like it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. And, and the results are there. I mean, look, we don't have all those things and we could have all those things. And, and the young people and the whole generation is missing because we're too busy. Conditioning, though, you know, that's what I think it is. It's the conditioning. Well, it's time to change. The world just changed. Exactly. And if we don't, and we need to support if, each other. And I think what you've done is just amazing. Yeah. So people, you have to support each other more because the talent is there, but we're not getting the support from each other. So how can the world take us seriously? So let's support each other on radio, on TV. You've disappeared. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> support each other, radio, TV, whatever. Everybody's important right now. Everyone support each other. Be around people that are going to support you and build up your confidence and help them too. That's how I work in my academy. Otherwise, move out the way because there ain't no time to play right now. The world changed. The world changed. So we have we had this question come in from someone. Okay. They asked, when you first hit the scene, what was the reaction from the Asian society, but the older generation to the younger generation? Yeah, the, it was harder to accept for the older generation. Yeah. But what they did respect was the fact that I was using my language when they started to, you know, it could do it in this one, two, three. And all. In yeah. fact, my, my, I never spoke Punjabi when I, when I was growing up. And, you know, people always tease me and now, now put it in the songs. And my parents even got closer to me through my music, if you like. So yeah. when, when people started understanding what I'm actually doing and saying and the language and this here, the interviews, I won them over. But it was a hard yeah. one. It was a tough one because, you know, straight away there's a there's a racism or a prejudice with black people and, you know, black, thieves and drugs and this and that. We have to change the stereotypes because, you know what, there's good and bad people in Asian society, black and white. Now it's about who's good and who's bad not about the religion or the color. Are you good or are you bad? If you're bad, you go over there. There's places for you to go. Where do the good people go? The bad people go to the prisons and the gangs. Where do the good people go? Time for the good people to stand up. AIM Academies, that's, that's, what, that's what it's about. Good people come together, respect manners, support each other and together we will move together and support the community and reach new heights. And that's what we've done. Help each other individually and help each other as a team. And then the community, city, bigger, wider world. Yeah. It's time to hit. It's time to hit these issues and find the answers. Trust me, we can do it. It's all coming. It's all coming. I think you know for sure. Um, okay, so going back to certain people's questions, and then we're going to go into AIM Academy as well, right? Okay. So, so far, what has been the biggest highlight of your career? I'm going to have to say now, from last week, getting the medal from the Queen. Right? So, <laughs> there's been many, many great, great things. I mean, from going to India to be see, going to see Sonia Gandhi, taking to see the Prime Minister of India to sign autographs with Kit. 
I'm into working with some of the greatest charities. Um, the AIM Academy changed my life because I needed meaning and purpose to my life more than music yes. after 30 years. So watching all those kids' smiles on their faces and opportunities, major thing. But obviously the Queen's thing recognises the genre, it recognises the journey. It mentions the, you know, the, the, the international success from Hollywood to Bollywood. And it mentions that the youth work, which, which is such a great, great thing to because to, it means something now to them that they're a part of a winning team whatever we went through difficulties and however look at that we've been recognized by the queen and it's been so and and so that's the greatest thing that's the greatest thing up to now last week i would have said something different yeah now we've got that and we're still going to the queen we're going to see the queen in april royal garden just mentioned there and bring up you still became a teacher in your own right yeah yeah so that's the story see life is like that so after Mm -hmm. my, my, my academy set up in a college after seven years, they said, listen, you're doing a great job. And they employed me to teach music and sport and all the things I wanted to teach in the first place. So Thank there you go. And I never gave up on that dream. And I did it at 53, at 50 years old. And, and I'll be teaching now for the next 20, 30 years, as well as music. So never give up on your dreams, guys. You know, life starts at 50, if you ask me. But, you know, never give up and keep going for it. You know, it's all about achieving and making every day productive. Good. Okay, so if you had to choose going back into your career, if you had to choose your own top three singles, what would they be? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> one. Hey, well, my first clear, first top single that I love, my f- my favourite song, it's become my most requested song, more than Boom Shakalak and all those songs, yeah. is a song called Om Namah Shivai. Okay. If, if you haven't heard it, people, you have to listen to it. It's, it's gone to a wider market. It's a spiritual song but it's become my most requested song. It's been on the biggest reggae compilations, but it's got this Indian twist. And there's a recent um, article out saying Damien Marley and some of the biggest artists were inspired by that song. If you haven't heard it, listen to the song and there's a video from India. So um, that's the first one. Number two, number two. Wow. Um, Chuck there was a great song. Yeah. I mean, everyone's for everywhere I go, everyone, can you, can you do the chuck there? Can you do number one in the Bombay chart? In the young me, I cheer them apart. I when we come with the one call Am. I when we come across the nation. Chuck there. So chuck there, I mean, chuck there was a great song, number one from Jamaica to Bombay. And wow, um, thank you to all the fans. Um, number three, it would have to be Boom Shakalak, wouldn't it? I mean, it should be first. Because, because, like in the top three somewhere, like you know, it's, it's done made. I mean, number one in many countries, top 10 in others. Um, it's been on over probably 250 TV commercials from Wranglers to Colgate. Yeah. You would have seen it this you would have seen it this year on the on the I Lynx think, commercial. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, driving everybody crazy, mm-hmm. driving me crazy now, right? <laughs> and then, um Obviously, eight Hollywood movies, Dumb and Dumber 1 and 2 and Scooby-Doo 2 and all these movies. Wow. So, boom, shakalak. Should be first. But you know what? What that did was yeah. people came into the world of Apache and discovered lots of other things like arranged marriage and Chakti and AIDS and whatever. It so, it, cool. it bought me new fans. So, great. Beautiful. Still used today. Beautiful. Okay. Love that. Okay. Right. Now, one of your most memorable moments ever in life. Wow. Okay, that's a good one. Good. I mean, you got some good questions today. See, I've been in so many interviews now, you got me off guard now. Uh, one of the memorable moments, I mean, um, I did a big tour of India back in the day, 1993. It was a six city tour, um, 50,000 people each city. I remember going to, um, I remember going to Delhi and it was a Nehru Stadium, 55,000 people. And I was taken to see Sonia Gandhi and her son Rahul. It was younger then, right? Yeah. Don't tell anyone secret, secret, yeah. And he said to me, if I would have said, said, taken to see the prime minister as well, but he said to me, he goes, he goes, Apache, I want to come to your show. He goes, I can't come because I'm you know, Sonia Gandhi's son. And I said, this is what you need to do. You need to disguise yourself. I will have you right there in the front. And he did it. He came. No way. Yeah. How did he disguise himself in a hat or a <laughs> No one would have known. So I can tell you that now. And he's a dear friend. And I'm going to be dabbling with politics with him. So look out for that. Okay, wicked. Um, Okay, so that was your memorable moment. Your embarrassing moment, because everyone has one. Oh, gosh. Embarrassing moment. Yeah, you have to share now. Um, I think think back in the day, I did a TV show. I know if I tell you that, you're going to go look for it. I won't tell you where it is. <laughs> I did a TV show and um, it was for, 
and it was I was on TV and it, I did a bad performance. It was the start of my start of my career. And it was I had to do a few songs, some Bangra beat or something like that. It was on remember back in the day, it was on BBC Two or something. Yeah. And I think I think they played movie of India beat, and I was singing a different song. I was singing Chuck there or something. So it was so embarrassing. And I thought, wow, it's on TV. And then later on, somebody actually co somebody copied it off TV and put it and made it a cassette and sold it everywhere. And I thought, oh my god, right. <laughs> Yeah, but did people actually realise, or could you get away with it? No, you'd realise. You'd say, you'd say, what is he doing? That's probably my worst performance. <laughs> don't, don't look for it, people. <laughs> but it's pretty embarrassing when you made, you know, they made a hundred thousand cassettes of them and sold them all over the place. So it wasn't... Oh, okay, right. So <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Favorite artist that you've ever collaborated with? That I've ever collaborated with? Oh gosh. And you've collaborated with a lot. Yeah, I mean, before I answer that question, I have to tell you, it's a, it's a great position to be in, to be able to collaborate with someone from India and then someone from Jamaica and then someone from the hip hop scene like Tim Dog. Who else can do that? Legitimately. So I've collaborated from Maxi Priest to Frankie Paul to Sly and Robbie to all of them in Jamaica. And India, I think Aya Romano was special. I have to say, and I've said it before, I worked with Asha Bosley. Yeah. I did a song called Year Lodica with her. Yeah. And um, I grew up with Asha, like I said, in my home when I was five and six years old. So to be in front of her, um, it was a great, great experience. Then I interviewed her for my Radio One show. But yeah. to be on an album that she dedicated to her, her husband called Rahul and I, and her husband had passed away, obviously. Yeah. And uh, this song called Yeah Lurka, Yeah Lurka, Hai, like I said, da, 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 da. Beautiful song. Look out for that song. Look about the collaboration. Asha G, what a great, great honor. So that would be my favorite club. And you can go into Market Singh, we can go into Jenna de Lutea. Yeah. Oh, oh. Too many, too many. Well, I Big think it's got that special one. There's always that kind of special one for a reason. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. all right, that's the collab. Okay, yeah. right. Um, your biggest musical inspiration. Okay, so straight away, I'm going to tell you Bob Marley. Okay. Robert Nesta Marley, I would say, such a great connection with him. There's a reggae DJ from back in the day um, called Supercat from Jamaica, Indian born reggae artist, brilliant, legendary artist. And they used to call him the Wild Apache. So, so my name comes from him. Apache comes from him, Indian because I'm Indian. So, Supercat, listen out for him. Okay. Bob Marley, Bob Marley died on my 14th birthday, 11th of May. So, everyone's. You know, just, yeah. yeah. I ended up signing to his record label, ended up going straight to his studios in Kingston, Jamaica, ended up working with his team, Sly and Robbie and everything, ended up touring the world and touring Japan with his wife, Rita Marley and the I3s. So a great relationship with the, with the Marley family and big respect to Tough Gong and great inspiration to be signed to, you know, it's such a great home for reggae music. So Bob Marley, super cat. That's phenomenal. Um, okay, right. Now you set up the Apache, music academy back in 2013 and that's you know obviously you've been recognized for your services and work with the youth by the, the queen for that and that's what you've been awarded for uh, which is phenomenal like how did that even happen yeah it's a very good i mean people ask me that question the truth is that i try to find the, the answer to one question all through my life and and privately in my prayers and my meditation and i was like this couldn't just be for music and fame and touring and money. There's something missing. There's something missing. And literally, I tried to search the answer, and the answer came. You know, it was the academy. It was helping young people. It was giving you giving back with the name that you've got. And um, otherwise, what was it for? Um, you know, I mean, what was it all for? Just to say, listen, go on, I'm in. Yeah. So I went back to Birmingham. I took one day out of my life, Wednesday, because I could fly out on a Thursday and go somewhere. Record, I mean, go to India and do a show. I'll be back by, I rearranged my whole life. My agents pulled their hair out. It cost me a lot of money just to be back in the country every single week. Wow. Um, I went into the college that I went to as, as a young person, um, Hansworth Technical College on Soho Road in Birmingham. And yeah. I said, give me, a little, give me a little spot. And I want to set up a youth club for the kids. I'm going to give you my time every Wednesday. I'm going to put a, my own studio. I want an empty room. I put a studio there, I put a pool table in there from my home, and I just went there every Wednesday, and kids started walking in from the streets. You know, kids that are involved with maybe knife crime, gun crime, so we're dealing with issues. It wasn't just about, let's sing a song, let's get people off the streets. And they all came, all people from all walks of life, so all ages coming together. So we're already, you know, getting people under the one roof. 
and we have this law, you know, just everyone manners, respect, let's live how we want to, you know, think the world should be, um, respect everyone. And, and it was about trying to get people back into jobs and education and have a bit of fun, get them off the streets. Seven years later, we've got a lot of people into jobs. We've got a lot of people back into that same college, Big Up South and City College. We've got a lot of people into apprenticeships. Um, we're dealing with mental health issues. You know, mainly it's mental health. A kid comes through my door, it's not music or even kick a ball. What's his mental health status? You know, I mean, has he eaten? Has he, so, you know, domestic, you know, violence? Lots of things behind the scenes that uh, get brushed under the carpet and these kids fall through the cracks and no one's helping them. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, we won the National Diversity Award for being the best group in the country. We've got that from in Liverpool, many, many awards, but it wasn't about the awards. It was about the what we're trying to do. So understand what we're trying to do, people. It's not just a youth club. Exactly. It's a way of dealing with the community problems. So what do, what do people say? There's lots of cuts. So let's then use what we've got. Every place has a college or a school which is shut after six. Yeah. Right, now we're not paying for anything. I will come forward, you come forward, you come forward, we have a team. We don't want to get paid. We have equipment and things that we can use. Tables and chairs in these colleges and schools belong to us from taxpayers' money. That's what I was told by the principal. If you have a better idea, Patrick, you tell me. It's yeah. heated, it's security because it's a college, right? So we've got all this already that we're paying for. First of all, let's use it. Secondly, I didn't ask for any funding. So let's not lean on funding and let me just do what I can do as a, as a, as a care, you know, caring human being for my community. We have hundreds and thousands of kids that have passed through. We work with the politicians, the councillors, the MPs. We, we've just, we are called the diamond of the community. Everybody works. And then we raise money for Diabetes UK and the charities that are important to us, include me too, um, Young People with Disabilities and St. Basil's, we pick three charities. St. Basil's did that work with homeless kids. So what about, look at that model. Yeah. It helps the community, it helps the individual. It, it doesn't rely on sort of funds. It has sustainability and it, and it helps the community, if not the wider city, if not the country, if everybody did it. It doesn't cost, it doesn't cost a penny. It's amazing what you've done. You know, it, it makes such a difference. And like, what do you feel like has been your biggest achievement with the academy? last seven years like what has been like the biggest achievement that you've seen from i mean the biggest achievement is you know young people turning their lives around young people now you know there was a young girl or, or you could tell us i mean if people if people must have watched it missed it sorry there's a piece on um, the bbc one show this summer did you see that yeah i watched it five minutes of my work and what the kids are doing in the academy so there's one particular girl that you see on there zoe that was kicked out of that college you know, bad manners, whatever, whatever. We brought her back into the academy. She's been there for seven years. She's the leader, youth leader of the academy. She just got employed by the college. Wow. To, to help them with enrollment and all these things. So don't give up on people, let them grow. Give them advice. A lot of people maybe not have both parents at home, whatever it may be. Maybe kids are not having a, you know, a meal at home. All these issues that people have heard over the news, like, you know, the the... the the lack of money, the lack of housing, the lack of food, food banks, knife crime, gun crime, gangs. Unless you hear it on the news, you don't think it's gone away. You know what I mean? It yeah. is there every day. We deal with that. So yes, the deal. I mean, I've visited kids in mental, you know, in mental uh, hospitals, in hospital. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, especially in the lockdown. My work increased because we're not coming together. Now we have to do it remotely. Wow. Wow, I mean, and then you've got to find ways of doing it. And I think you know what, like, a huge respect to what you've done. Like, I just think it's just beautiful and amazing. Like, just to change people's worlds and lives, you know, from where they were. Like, you you just don't know. I mean, how do you think the kid the kid feels? I mean, we've been on Sky TV, they've been on ITV, now they've been on the One Show. They're already confident from the kid that you know everyone said ah. Oh, and now they're confident, you know, the, 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 it shows in their lives, it shows back at home, it shows in their schools. So, uh, and, and because it's a music academy and I've got contacts from Hollywood to Bollywood, three, three young people have been signed to That's international cool. record companies. Look at that, you know what I mean? Wow, so it's working, it's so working. So phenomenal, so phenomenal. So, next question I have for you. Okay. Three words you would describe yourself in. Oh, Wow, look at these questions. After 100 interviews, you give me new questions. I thought I had this sussed. Um, Listen, I can't be like everyone else. <laughs> okay. The first word would be private, as much as I'm very public, okay. about, you know, I, I appreciate my pride, I value it even more, so private. Um, 
workaholic. I don't start working. I'm always working because I love, I love it. I mean, that's what I've set up the academy. No one told me to do it. I went to the music business. No one. Told, I'm just always achieving. So probably too much. Um, so private uh, workaholic. What's the third? Private workaholic and um, you should say a bad one. <laughs> no, nah, I won't say that. Um, private. <laughs> um, I don't know. Passionate. Okay. Private. So, Workaholic and passionate. I was gonna. I was gonna say moody. I was gonna say moody. So I'm <laughs> Number four. Right? What I would say, right? <laughs> okay. Right. So I had like. Okay. So I've got a question. Um, two questions from two people that asked me. One is, how do you keep fit? <laughs> How do I keep fit? I told you I wanted to be a sports teacher and I teach sport. I love sport. Yeah. So everyone, everyone needs to keep fit, especially when you're my age. So pay attention to your health. Yeah. Very, very important. That's another part of our academy. Another part of being a musician. If you're not fit enough for the road, you're not going to make it. Yeah, so but basketball. I play basketball a lot. Okay. okay. Basketball. Yeah. No That's gyms. Good. Keep working hard. Clean your house. Hoover the house. Clean your house. Keep fit. Right. <laughs> And then another random question was, what were your favorite childhood sweets? I love crunchy, you know, chocolate crunchy. No, I still love it, I still love it. <laughs> and um, the, the purple sweets, it starts with P, Palam, I don't know, I love them. I don't Violet know which looking purple sweets. one is. Pardon? Oh, I do know which one. Are you talking about those like small little round ones? Yeah. And, and these little packets, and they used to yeah. Pack, like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I didn't know what they're called. <laughs> Listen, back in the day, those sweets, we used to get five pence and three pence and run to the shop for a little sweet. And now, <laughs> wow, lollipop was a go. Luxuries back in the day. <laughs> okay, right. So we're kind of finished with the questions, right? Okay. So now, what happens on the lock in show is that we do a 60 second quiz. So I've got 10 questions. Okay. I'm going to see how many questions you can answer. So we do a tally at the end. So, so far the lead is Prems, who was on our last episode, which is four out of 10. H and Val got three out of 10. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this and I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm gonna just get my stopwatch on so I can record you. Wow, okay. <laughs> Seconds and we're gonna see how many you get. Um, right. Uh, yeah, ready. Okay, stopwatch. Right, you ready for this? Yeah. Okay, let's go. What kind of stew is the most popular in Jamaica? Beef stew. How long does it take to make jerk chicken? Oh, it takes a few hours, four hours. No, well, it takes well, seasoning two days before. <laughs> Two days of seasoning and it makes it you can make it in about four hours. In fact, I had this conversation yesterday. Okay. Correct. You had a um a single out with Maxi Priest. Um which year was this in? Say it again. A single. You had a single you featured on a single of Maxi Priest. 1992. You worked with Rex and FX. What was the multi platinum hit? Rec Shop. That's the huh? chocolate hit. Which Rec one? Shop. Rec Shop with Teddy Riley. That was That's their multi platinum hit. Well, that was a song that I featured on in the UK and that was in the charts too. So. Okay. You've also worked with um, the late Paul Blake, who promoted his career, um, who promoted, uh, who's passed away. What was he dubbed as? Frankie Paul, Stevie Wonder of reggae music. Frankie Stevie Wonder Paul, beautiful. Okay, we've got through five questions and it's now one past one minute, so I'm gonna stop that. Right, <laughs> so what kind of stew is most popular in Jamaica? What did you just say, beef? I said beef stew, should be chicken stew in it. No, it's pork. <laughs> pork, boy, no, no, we're not dealing with the pork, you know, dread, oh, no, no, I don't know. Okay. You, must yeah. you got that one wrong. How okay. long take to make jerk chicken you said four hours is actually two hours <laughs> wow okay trick okay. question that was and then obviously you got number three right which was the maxi priest um which year it was 992 and then you worked with obviously rex and effects what was their multi-platinum hit it was rump shaker 
Yes, it was. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that one, Mark. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. And then obviously we've Can got Paul Blake. What was he the most loved as? Stevie Wonder. Yep, got that one right. So you have literally two out of ten. <laughs> Technically two out of five, so not doing bad there. I'm, I'm, I, I came last. That's terrible. <laughs> it's all right. We'll get you on another show and we'll get you yeah. on another quiz. So then we can just like, you know. Sorry, guys. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Right. So... Last but not least, but the last few questions, Apache, are okay. um, your words of wisdom to artists. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm always giving to artists. To artists, or people, just everyone. Your three okay. words of wisdom. Or three words of wisdom. I mean, to artists, to everybody. I mean, look at the, the world has changed. To ask yourself the question, how have you changed? You can change in a small way, in a big way. People are going a little bit crazy too. So you know what? Support other people, support mental health. Um, do your best, be your best, stay safe. I mean, I've got so much things to say. Make every day productive, especially in the lockdown. Um, you know, don't go crazy. There's things that you can do. Be creative, think out the box. If you can't talk to somebody, go online. There's people around from teachers to friends, to uncles, to families. This is the time that we need support. We need to support other people. This is it. This is the, this, this is the, if this is not the time, when is the time? You know, there's, there's over a thousand people died last night in the UK, million around the world. If we're not going to say, put, put away racism, put away the color of the skin, put away any differences that we have, we need to be standing up and counting. And you know what? No disrespect to the politicians. They gain it wrong sometimes. So sometimes in the past, they've got it wrong and we've lost a job or we've lost a house or whatever. Now you're going to lose a life. So now it's about being, being, being wise yourself. Don't look at what he's doing or what you're saying because what, or trying to show off or trying to, I can do this. You can lose a life. You can kill somebody. You can spread this disease further. And I hear it's getting worse. You know, it's coming from South Africa. It's scaring me. I traveled all over the world and this is not looking good. Before, you know, in the summer, the sun was shining and people saying, let's have a laugh. It's winter, you know, and it's, and it's 2021 and we're starting with this again. So our culture, what can I say? You know, we need to support each other more. Again, look what's happened, but we have some real, real issues to deal with internally. You know, that racism, that prejudice, that looking down at, at you know, castes, discrimination. There's a big movement going on. Look what's happening in India uh, with the farmers movement. Look what's happening in, 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 in America with the Black Lives movement. You think all this is happening together the same It's planned by somebody. It's a sign to say the world is changing. Either people have enough of politics or racism or, or, or famine or come on, it's time for the good people to be counted. Get in touch with me, Apache Indian HQ. I'm not here to promote myself or tell you anything about my new album or nothing. It's about what you represent. What are you saying as an artist, as a person right now? Big respect to Am. I have to give you, I mean, I've known this lady for a couple of years and we've always spoken. She's always speaking out the box. She's always coming with something creative. This, this interview after 100 interviews different from anything else. We've had fun, it's been informative questions that I've never heard. So support people and try to do something different. I did something different 30 years ago and only getting praise from the queen now. So I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I recognize the higher level now. It took me to look, I didn't expect that, but look of all the journey. And then, oh gosh, Hello. sorry, sorry. Look, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can see. Yeah, we can see you back. See okay. Back. I mean, I, I've got so much things to say. I mean, I just want the world to be a better <laughs> place. Do your best. Be your best. Try your best. Encourage other people from youngers to elders. Link the bridge. If we don't do what, what we do in our culture at my age, then, you know, for my children, how are they going to have a link to India? So yeah. we have a responsibility for all these things. And so the world has become smaller. We need to be better people. We need to ignore the things. And if someone says something bad in front of you in your home, say that's wrong. If an elder person makes a racist comment, say, listen, Dad, you've been saying these odd things for a long time. Stop it because yeah. it's embarrassing and we haven't moved on. Say the things you want to say. Keep away from drugs, people. Keep away from alcohol, people. Keep away from gangs. Keep Look reflect on your own life take this time to reflect on yourself and let's move forward together we need more of this we need more podcasts this is not about one interview we, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff together and spread that love but that's what we do through music spread love spread culture spread peace and all those musicians out there write some serious lyrics man you know what i mean write things about going why haven't we had a song about covid or what's happening in india come on i've been writing things for 30 years still having fun but use the platform to make a difference come on there's things to say and, and, and don't follow the trend, set new trends.
God bless you. So much things to say. Sorry. <laughs> All right. And so if people want to follow your journey, see what you're up to, see what the academy is up to, Pachi, like where can they follow you? Yeah. On? Get in touch. I mean, these days, anyone can get in touch at any time. I get questions from, as I said, from Jamaica to Japan to Jalanda. Just that you can, you can get in touch with any artist. Apache Indian HQ. Just Instagram, direct message. Come with your respect. Come with your manners. Tell me what you have done and how we can help you. AIM Academy, A-I-M, M turns into Music Academy, based in a college, seven years. Get in touch. I will not ignore you. I can help you as a young person. Look into the Instagram. You can have five years of, like, literally our CV of what we've done for young people, what we've done for community, what we plan for the future. Um, so get in touch. And, you know, I have, a, I have AIM Academy in Holland now already for a year. We're going to have AIM Academy in India soon. So just a place where people can come and help each other. There's nothing wrong with that and separate from the good and the bad people it's a time for all good people to meet and greet aim academy street that's how we do it star. amazing apache thank you just so so much for just like coming thank on you. the show um it, it's been a phenomenal journey and it's such an inspiration to just listen to and you've just done such amazing work and it, it's, it's just phenomenal and i'm just i'm so inspired and i'm so grateful that you were able to come on tonight and just share this journey with so many other people that are watching or come watch back so thank you so so much thank you for your help and support and obviously you know we waited for this for a long time yeah. thank you for your support even before anyone is even mentioning any of this we've been talking for a couple of years yeah. so lots to do and uh, thank you to all the listeners viewing out there and and get in touch get in touch, in yeah. touch follow mr apache and yeah. the, the academy like check them out god bless god <laughs> thank bless. you so much Bye.